Hi, it's Noah again for Smart Prototyping. Last time, I showed you a pair of our awesome WS2812 LED arrays, and this time, I've got three of them for you. How cool is that? That's right, really cool. Well, I needed a project to do with those three LED arrays. Now that's 768 RGB pixels. You can do quite a lot with that. So I decided to try reproducing one of my favorite childhood games, Arkanoid. Arkanoid is a sort of a basic brick breaker game. And uh, you can see up here, we have an array of randomly generated uh, multicolored bricks. And at the bottom will be a paddle that I use to try to keep the ball from falling off the bottom of the screen. I'm going to be controlling that paddle using this cool little range finding sensor down here. So as you can see, as I move my hand, the paddle moves and the ball bounces off of it. And if it falls off the bottom of the screen, game over. The components that we're using for this project are an Arduino compatible microcontroller. In this case, I'm using a Node MCU uh, ESP8266 module, just because it was the uh, only microcontroller that I had sitting here on my desk that was fast enough to uh, drive 768 WS2812s. You could also use something like an Arduino Due. Um, a normal Arduino uh, based on an Atmega uh, 32.8p is not actually gonna be fast enough to drive this many uh, WS2812s. So I'm using this uh, Node MCU and uh, the components uh, from Smart Prototyping, we do sell the Node at MCU, and the other components from Smart Prototyping uh, that we're using for this project are our uh, VL53L0X uh, sensor module. It is basically a, a laser rangefinder that, that's actually using time of flight, so it's actually measuring the amount of time uh, that photons are taking uh, to travel from the emitter back to the receiver on here um, and and has a range down to uh, about three centimeters. So that's, um, that's pretty crazy just from a, a physics standpoint. Uh, so this is a pretty remarkable new sensor. Um, and then we have three of our uh, WS2812 uh, addressable LED arrays, which I mentioned, uh, which I introduced in our previous video. So again, this is 256 WS2812 LEDs. Now, I am not ashamed to say um, that uh, we're using the Adafruit NeoPixel library and the Adafruit uh, VL53L0X. Uh, you see, I keep going and reading that off the screen. Um, it's a fairly new sensor, and I haven't actually uh, memorized the part number yet. Um, we're also using the Adafruit library for this. Um, Adafruit uh, and Limar, in particular, uh, do uh, really remarkable work. Um, uh, writing driver libraries for all of these devices and uh, it certainly makes my life easier. We sell a lot of uh, products that are compatible with theirs and um, that's that's the beauty of open hardware uh, is that everything is interoperable. Uh, I do uh, I do suggest supporting their site and and buying their products. Uh, however, when the uh, difference in price is as dramatic as uh, $100 for th versus uh, $60 for uh, this LED array, for instance, um, go ahead and buy it from us. So, um, let's see. So let's start by just loading some test code uh, onto that Node MCU. I've got one uh, already wired up here. Um, for the purposes of 
the game that we'll be developing in this uh, project. Uh, I'm just using a little solderless breadboard here um, just for uh, a stand, uh, just to mount this perpendicularly. So I have a 90 degree uh, female pin header and just popping that into the breadboard and popping our sensor module in there. Um, and I've already uh, basically taped together a, uh, a wire harness. It's just, um, it's just I2C, I squared C, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Inter-integrated circuit, if you want to do the whole shebang. Um, TWI even, two wire interface. Um, and wouldn't this be more convenient if there was a little, you know, four, tiny little four pin header that you could use to connect the I2C devices, you know, like for instance, this MPU 6050 breakout board. Um, yeah, if there was something like this, uh, SparkFun has actually just introduced a, uh, a new standard that they're calling uh, Quick. Uh, which happens to be the same as uh, some boards that I made quite a few years ago. So um, I think we're going to be throwing our weight behind that standard and uh, I look forward to making one of these sensor boards that uh, uses that connector instead of the standard pitch uh, pin header. So anyway, we've got this hooked up to our microcontroller now and I'm just going to load on the Adafruit example sketch. And dot, 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 loading, as you can see from our little blinking blue LED, so exciting. And uh, I did, uh, I used Adafruit uh, libraries extensively in uh, writing the game code uh, that we're going to be playing with later. Okay, so our test firmware is all loaded up and you can see here that we're we're getting range numbers oh. 35 centimeters here bring the camera closer ah that number is getting lower oh no impending crash Actually, you're still. You can see the light in it, you know? Wait, you can? Yeah. Nice. Infrared laser. Ah, my eye. Okay. So, next up, we are going to take our nice little addressable LED arrays and we're going to chain them on together. Since we've got these extra wire harnesses here on the back with the power and ground it's probably a good idea to isolate them uh, so that we don't accidentally short anything out okay Kachuk. boom that is a 768 WS2812, or NeoPixel, if you will, LED array. Easy peasy. And we're going to need to supply power to that. You could, in theory, supply power through the uh, voltage regulator on this board. Um, that's a really bad idea. Um, if you do that, you'll let the magic smoke out. Uh, so these things actually draw quite a lot of power. You could do that if um, if you were just running the game and uh, just uh, lighting up a few LEDs at a time. But if you uh, basically illuminate uh, upwards of one panel all at once, uh, you would pull uh, way more current than, than the circuitry on this board could handle. So I'm pulling power directly from a USB port, um, potentially making my computer or a powered USB hub uh, quite unhappy, but those are going to shut off automatically um, 
as opposed to this, which would simply fry. So, you know what? Rather than hot plugging that, I'm gonna take this connector here at the end of our array, and I've color-coded these. Always use the right color jumper, children. Um, and power ground. And you can power these uh, LED matrix panels from anywhere in the chain uh, that you want to. So any of these wire harnesses attached to the back, so you could supply power there, and, uh, and that would power the entire array. So next up, I am going to take this wire here, which we're using for data. And the data pin uh, that I'm using is Arduino pin 6, which maps to pin D3 on the, um, on the node MCU. And that's one of those things that you just have to go look up in documentation uh, if you're not using an actual Arduino brand board or clone thereof. For instance, the NOAA Labs SM Duino. This has the same pinout as an Arduino would. So I'm just gonna pop that into the, uh, the header there on the uh, input end of the array. So for the data, you actually do have to, um, there is a, an inside and an outside what I mean is the data goes in on one side and out on the other, not that it has like an inside and an outside. Um, so, uh, and then we're also gonna connect ground, which uh, isn't really a must since these are both being powered from the same USB hub and have a common ground anyway. But uh, if you were, for instance, powering uh, the LED array from one source and the microcontroller from another, you would need to link up the grounds uh, so, that the, uh, so that the data signal um, would, could be interpreted uh, would work. I'm plugging the array in and now everything is powered up. And let's load our game. Uh, uploading, uploading, no. Okay, so uh, this, this arrangement is actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but I think the sensor would do much better uh, if, if we stood it up on something, uh, must have something around here that we can pop it up on. Um, uh, this ought to do the trick. Okay. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> here. So after our little uh, sensor stand uh, breakdown, um, we're back up and running. One of the wires came loose. We're, we're a real pro outfit here, you can see. I really enjoyed throwing together this little hack for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. This is actually pretty hard. Ah. Well, you can get more information about the project and download the source code by clicking here. See you next time.